See, there's something within us that wants to leave a legacy. But here's the thing you need to know is if God asks you to do something, don't look at the size of the job, look at the size of your God who asked you to do it. See, he laid down his life for you, so that tells me that you are not worthless, you are worthy. And this is what he wants to rewrite into your story. That reality impacts everything. Hey Lakeland, welcome to week nine of Heroes. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed our series together as we've been going through Hebrews chapter 11, hero by hero, uh, just learning more and more about who God has called us to be uh, through their example. And so let me give you just a glimpse of what's coming up next. Uh, Josh is coming back. Uh, we're excited to have him back. And he's going to be launching into a series called Then and Now. Then and Now. We're going to be looking at scriptures where uh, things applied then. And it was kind of a picture of what was going on in, in, in a current time when the scripture was actually written down. And how it also applies to us today as disciples of Jesus. So we're excited about that short series coming your way uh, this next weekend. So uh, we're finishing up our series with an amazing hero, uh, and his name is Moses. And many of you know Moses that have hung around the church and, and uh, heard his name, or even if you haven't been to church a whole lot, uh, you might know this character, Moses. And uh, so many things, I, uh, one of the statements I made this weekend is how many things could, amazing things could actually happen to one guy. And that's how I feel when I think about Moses and when I think about his life. I kind of um, equate Moses with like a Forrest Gump type character. Like when you watch Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump goes through so many different amazing things. Uh, Forrest like is a Vietnam vet. Uh, he gets, he, he meets like three different presidents. He's this ping pong champion. Uh, you know, he's this all American football player. Uh, and he's just, he owns this shrimp boat company and then he invests in Apple and makes all this money. And he's just like this guy that like so much happens to. And I think that way, when I think about Moses, there are so many scenes in Moses's life that make him in into this supersized hero uh, that we see in Hebrews chapter 11. And so he was rescued as a baby. Maybe you can remember that. Uh, the Red Sea, this parting of the Red Sea so that the Israelites who were on the run um, could actually uh, head to the promised land. Uh, when they were into the wilderness and all those things that happened in the desert at that time and God providing food for them uh, in that. Israelites uh, leaving Egypt and all the plagues that happened along with that. And even the Ten Commandments and the adage just right Right on top of that, he wrote the first five books of the Bible. That's amazing. Like, this is a guy that a lot has happened to. And maybe in your small groups, you can remember other scenes or uncover other scenes uh, that happened in Moses' story that make him the hero uh, that he is. But Hebrews chapter 11, of all the heroes they mention, they actually spend more verses on Moses than any other hero. And so it goes like this, Hebrews chapter 11, starting in verse 23, it says, By faith, Moses' parents, so his hero story actually begins with his parents. Uh, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was no ordinary, ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Um, so what happened is uh, Pharaoh was making a decision that the Israelites were getting too big uh, and he was a little fearful about what they could do with such a large population. And so he made a rule and he sent down a law that all um, of the Israelite babies were going to be murdered, uh, especially the boys. And so when uh, his parents figured out that they were pregnant, they actually hid him for three months. And you remember the scene where he's floating on the river and he actually floats up to Pharaoh's daughter. And so the person who's trying to kill all these babies, eventually Moses uh, ends up in the arms of Pharaoh's daughter and gets taken and is raised in the palace. I mean, it's just this amazing story. Who would that happen to? Uh, it happened to Moses. And it, can, it continues verse 24, by faith, uh, Moses, when he, had, uh, when he had grown up, he refused to be known as the son of a Pharaoh or Pharaoh's daughter. And so he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded uh, disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead uh, to his reward. And there are also several other verses in Hebrews 11 just about Moses. And this author of Hebrews actually gives us several instances where Moses actually exercises faith in his story. 
He's counted as a hero. And what makes Moses really interesting in our whole series is that we've kind of encountered two kinds of heroes along the way. There's been few exceptions. We've either seen heroes who are very, very young and they had this heroic moment that kind of set them on the trajectory of being a hero. And then we meet these heroes who are super, super old and uh, they're counted as heroes in their old age. We find Moses, the Bible tells us, at 40 years old, uh, making heroic heroic decisions uh, that kind of set his life uh, on the trajectory of being a hero. And so at 40 years old, not like a boy, not like an old man, he makes decisions um, that are game changers for him. And so what does Hebrews chapter 11 actually tell us about uh, Moses and the decisions that he made? We see that he turned his back on position. He turned his back on position. He grew up in the palace, even though he that really wasn't where he was born. He wasn't really born in that family. He was just raised by Pharaoh's daughter. And I thought it was really interesting. One person put it this way, is that in his adult years, uh, Moses just had to make a choice about who he was actually going to belong to and what his story was actually going to be. Interesting that he could have actually had maybe one or two lines written in some tomb somewhere in hieroglyphics, you know, uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics, and that would have been his legacy. And instead, he chose to be God's man uh, in the moment for um, Israel. He could have been uh, wrapped as a mummy. He could have been mummified, and we could go to a museum today and see this Egyptian mummy named Moses uh, because that's the trajectory that his life was on except he walked away from all that. He walked away from that position to be God's man and to do incredible things. Uh, We learn from Hebrews chapter 11 that he walked away from pleasures, not just position, but pleasures as well. And along with that came possessions. Um, All the treasures that were in the houses of Egypt that he could have enjoyed, um, he gave all of that up because he was comparing it to eternity. He was comparing it to what God was calling him to do uh, in this moment uh, for his people. And really what I come down to in Moses' story is a couple things. There's just this overarching theme of his life. Uh, Hebrews makes a big deal about all of these uh, instances where he exercised faith. But the big overarching story of Moses' life is that he was born into chaos. He was rescued from the chaos. And then he was sent back into chaos to save others. He was born into chaos. Uh, all this, all these laws that were coming about and how babies were being killed at that time to control population. He was born in that chaos. He was rescued from it. Pharaoh's daughter picking him up. And then through a burning bush and through several other instances in Moses' life, he was sent back into the chaos by God uh, to do something amazing. And when I look at Moses' story, I actually think about our own story. I think about Jesus and I think about uh, what he has done for us that we too are born into chaos. We're born into sin. And through Jesus, we are rescued from sin And when God gets a hold of our lives and when he begins to speak these truths into our lives, we are sent back in on the front lines to do amazing things to help others know Jesus. Moses' story is our story. And uh, for the last two weeks, we've been talking about saying yes to serving. Uh, we want everyone in the living room to say yes to serving. We've got small group leaders in there. Maybe we got other people who are serving in different capacities. But we really want to challenge everyone in the living room to get into the game. Because God has wired you to do amazing things on his behalf. You are wired to be a hero and to upgrade to hero status. And so uh, we want to help you in any way we can in that journey. And uh, I just want to offer this up. Uh, our serve director, Kate would love to talk with you. You can reach Kate at kate at lakeland.church, kate at lakeland.church, and she would love to start you on your serving journey. Moses didn't start as a hero, but he became a hero when he said yes, like all these other heroes. And so as we talk about Moses' story, I just encourage you to go all in on that. How do you see yourself in Moses' story? And uh, what are some things that you could even learn from this amazing supersized hero of the faith. Thanks so much for uh, joining us for Heroes for the last nine weeks. It's been a fun ride uh, to go through that. God wants to make a hero out of you and a hero out of your small group. And so thanks for doing what you're doing. Take your next steps. Don't stop moving. Keep moving towards Jesus. And let's see the amazing things that he does uh, for us. Thanks so much. And we'll see you this weekend at Lakeland.